You can do the exact same procedure um, except now for a strain as well. So you can do these same types of rotations, the same type of more circles um, and linear algebra proposed, uh, approach for strain. So um, again, there are equations just like we had if you want to do the plug and chug method, just like there was for um, stresses. And you can see here, you see the only difference right here. What is this? This is our engineering or tensorial definition of uh, of strain as well. So you do the same thing, but you see again, we have on our y-axis, um, our x-axis here, and our y-axis the shear strain gamma over 2, y gamma over 2, because again our tensorial definition of shear strain. So that's always going to be um, essentially how we're going to work with it, uh, with it, although we'll have to take this out here. So we have to, you would do the exact same procedures here. So if you're doing your more circle approach is the exact same thing, um, and you would just utilize essentially your stress and strain tensor. So remember though, why are we plotting this? It's because of this definition of tensorial um, strain. So that's essentially where that comes from if you see more circle for strain. You usually don't see more circle too much for strain except if you're using strain gauges and trying to figure out um, some of those values. But remember, this is our strain tensor. This, if it's in our strain tensor, we're assuming that this is equal to this right here, epsilon 1, 2, not gamma. But sometimes you'll be asked and you will actually work with and actually measure strain in this notation. Now you just have to figure out how and what is the definition that you're working with here. So if you are given, you can just convert here. If you convert this into this, epsilon 1, 1, epsilon 2, 2, and then epsilon 1, 2, which is easy enough to do. You just All you have to do is just divide this by 2. Um, then you can proceed with my new strain state is just going to be equal to t dot my old strain state. You'll see in some books and in some notation this Reuters matrix. What is this Reuters matrix doing? Well, it's assuming that this epsilon is this epsilon right here. So inverse of r. My inverse of my Reuters matrix just changes this to one half. Everything else is the same. So if I dot this to this, epsilon one, one, epsilon one, two, and then gamma one, two, this dotted with this becomes the result becomes this. Epsilon one, one, epsilon two, two, epsilon, excuse me, epsilon one, two. I'm converting, this step converts into tensorial strain. Then I could do this to get to my new strain state, and I multiply by, or I dot it with R again, to go back to, in this notation, this is my epsilon 1, 1 prime, epsilon 2, 2 prime, and my gamma 1, 2 prime. So if you want to stay in that state, now that's a lot of work, I would just divide by 2, but if you see this Reuters matrix utilized a lot, um, that's kind of the rationale, and that's the reason. So I would just divide out right now, and then jump straight into this. All right, that's pretty much, I mean, again, it's it's very, 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 very similar to our previous uh, basically linear algebra, more circle approach. And then next time we're going to see how we can actually write the whole, you know, enchilada, so to speak, um, with uh, kind of this isotropic stress strain uh, relationships um, for plane stress state, uh, plane stress. And then we'll get into 3D rotations. So thanks. See you next video. Bye.